Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And my friends, we have yet another exceptional guest this morning on the show. Um, Kim is a rock star marketer coming up in the digital marketing space. She's a retired military nurse or a, a former military nurse. Her husband is retired from the military after 21 years of service. Um, they met in the military. Uh, she is somebody who has been, you know, obviously lots of other experience between then and, and coming to legendary specifically with being a nurse and more. And she found us. We're going to hear all about that. This is actually, she's a returning guest. Uh, this is, if I'm not mistaken, her third time on the show this morning. And she's somebody who keeps coming back because she keeps rocking it and keeps having amazing value that we can all learn from. And we're just so excited every time we have a chance to to, uh, to talk to her. So with that being said, let's get ready to rumble. Kim, welcome back to the show. Hi. How are you, my friend? Good. How are you? Excellent. Did I get all of that right? I feel like I'm like getting it down pat. I know you, you've, we've talked uh, and I've been watching you and your, in your growth and I'm just so, you know, so impressed and proud of you. Um, welcome back. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you. You did. You got all of that, right? We've got a story and we often take it for granted. We often forget that's not like normal. So you got it. Third time's the charm. <laughs> Well, still thankful for you and your husband's service and, um, you know, uh, hopefully he's doing well and the family is doing well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, great. So for those who don't know you, um, tell us a little bit about, in a nutshell, uh, how you found us, what motivated you to want to, uh, more, what was your motivation to wanting to start an online business? What, what brought you into this wild space from being a, a, a military nurse and a nurse, the, the, you know, best of what America has to offer to saying, Hey, I want to be an you talk to us about what that looked like and, and what brought you here. Sure. Sure. So I did the typical go to school. Um, and while I was in school, I was like, Hey, so I was in nursing school. Um, it was, the 2000s. Um, I'm 40. So it was the 2000s. And it was like, everyone's at war, the world is crumbling. And I was like, you know, army keeps talking to me, I could be a great asset to the team. So I decided to join ROTC. Well, after I graduated, I joined active duty in the army to become a nurse. And I did eight years. I like you said, I went to Iraq, I actually met my husband in Iraq. He's a now retired army helicopter pilot. And we we did the dang thing. Like we hustled. We, we were, you know, without kids at first. Um, and we just hustled, we did it and we worked hard and we did whatever anyone wanted us to do. And that was life. And then, um, there was, you know, it's your early twenties. So you're not thinking like, I'm unhappy. You're just like, okay, what's next in life? I'm, I'm ticking off these boxes, even though my life was not necessarily traditional. It was very traditional military life. And I got out when we decided we wanted to start having kids so that both of us wouldn't be deployed at the same time because that just ripped me apart thinking of that and that people did that. And so me being a nurse, I went into the civilian world as a nurse and started working for um, the bigger hospitals. I had a master's degree. I have an alphabet after my name and I actually liked my job when I first started. I was showing new nurses how to be a nurse and I found a lot of joy in that. And I did not even think twice about going back to work. Had my first child and I was so new at this company. I had to give my child at six weeks old to a stranger, a daycare. And I was like, oh, like, okay, that's life, right? That's just how the world works. And, um, Eventually, that hospital was a smaller hospital. It got bought out by a larger corporation. And that's how hospitals are now. But everything started to be different in the hospital scene. But again, 
me just, I, I did what I was supposed to do. I'm just checking off life's boxes. And uh, my husband and I continued to move around the world. We went to Australia on a tour um, on his coattails. When I got to Australia, we didn't know this. They're like, you can't work here. You don't have a visa. You, you can't work here. And I was like, I've never not worked. Like my husband was like, oh, oh, she's going to leave me. Um, so by that point I had a two-year-old and a, a newborn. So I was like, oh, it's a good time to like chill with the kids. Well, I can't sit still. So I was a stay at home mom and I started my own little business making things. I was making signs. I was making cups and shirts and selling them on Facebook marketplace. It was great. Um, I had a great time doing that. Um, it's a lot of work. And I'm trying to like burp the baby in between and put one, you know, nap time. And so that was that. But anyway, so I, we eventually came back to the U S and I was on a hunt for like that job that I had, that I loved and I found it or so I thought, and then COVID hit and mm -hmm. when I say like extreme burnout and watching your like your whole like industry just crumble. I was like, this is it. Like I have to find something different because what's going on up here is not good. I told a new grad one day, you should quit your job. <laughs> and I came home and I told my husband, I said, I'm, I'm going to get fired. I'm burning out. And I didn't see that coming. And so I was like, I need to find something different. So out of desperation, like I left and I was like, I'm going to go do this like nurse aesthetic thing. Um, and I started in a puppy mill corporate job. I'm glad I did. You got to take stepping stones. I got fired from that job. After all of that work, I got fired from that job because I tried to take a half day off to go get my kid. It was approved and somebody called in and they're like, you need to cover for her. I'm like, I'm a mom. I got to go get my kid. And then two weeks later, they're like, this isn't for you. I'm like, okay. So I was like, all right. So rock bottom. I can no longer provide the income for my family that I'm used to having. I'm a successful person. I've ticked all these boxes. And so I'm like, this life is not working. Like I'm doing what society says I should do. And it's not working for our family. So I dove in to the internet. Um, I casually saw M. Wolcott a while ago and I took a screenshot of it and I just left it in my phone to die and started freelance writing and um, nursing journals, started finding little remote jobs. And finally it was like, this is good, but it's still a lot of work. And I'm still trying to work at a W-2 job as well. So I just was finally like, okay, these people who are saying they're doing this thing online, like I need to give it a try. I was skeptical as everyone else. Like, is this actually a thing? So in November of 2022, I purchased the 15 day challenge. I did not launch until February of 2023. And the, the, like Dave said, this is my third show. So if you watched my last one, you watched me say, I had to restart the whole dang business in January of this year. Um, and finally saw some good success. And But I was in this mindset of like, I can't rely on the world to provide an income for me. So I'm going to have to rely on myself at this point. And um, sure enough, I was like, if it takes 10 years to make this work, that's like 10 years, I don't have to do the nine to five thing. So I'm down. Um, so my whole mindset is like, I'm here for it. Like, what does it take? I'm here for it. Mm. Yeah. And Christopher says can totally relate to this. Um, you know, leaving our kids can be such a wake up call, says Elizabeth. Um, you, you know, it, it, it really is. Um, you know, Heather says I can hundred percent understand where she's coming from. I checked all the boxes, but it's not working. And, um, man, isn't that frustrating? Uh, and you know about that way more than I do. I, you know, dropped out of school, um, and, um, uh, you continued on in, in many, many, uh, of, you know, millions of people did too. Uh, mm -hmm. hundreds, you know, tens of millions, you, you know, uh, how many people have got a college education in this country? I, I don't know, but it's a lot. And how many people have advanced college degrees where they went to grad school? Um, 
And of those people, this would be an interesting statistic for um, the colleges to, to, to provide. Um, how many of those people are working in that degree field? You know, how many of those people are happy mm -hmm. at degree field? What's the average earnings of that profession, mm -hmm. you know, that person or those people who have those degrees? Um, you know, my experience is there's as in this is just this is just personal experience. There's as many or more. I'm trying to be conservative here as many or more people that are not even working in the degree field that they have their degree in. They did everything right. They followed all the instructions. Uh, my executive assistant, you know, it has a degree and um, is still paying student loans. And they had, you know, she missed a payment at some point, just, un, you know, just missed it. Um, uh, or they had they had deactivated or or something, and then a company picked the loan up and paid a payment for her and reactivated it, and then interest built up. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the 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 nonsense that goes on with student loan debt alone, where it gets consolidated, you know, it gets sold to other companies, and the, I mean, and it's the only debt, one of the only debts besides tax debt that is unforgivable. Mm -hmm. unforgivable it, it, it's 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 the only type of debt besides tax debt that you cannot claim in a bankruptcy um so it it can never get wiped and the thing that that kills me about it is that and we talk about predatory selling predatory marketing i mean look we've we here at legendary try to do everything that we can to be a leader and educate and always have mm -hmm. compliance trainings, you know, d you know, internal sales culture and marketing culture of doing our best to try to make sure that, that, you know, clients are, you know, are sure about what they're buying, that it's not putting them in a financial bind. I mean, we ask that question at every sale, you know, mm -hmm. is this putting you in a financial bind? Um, but colleges begin. And of course it's the way that it's a perfect system, right? We, 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 we almost, I'm looking for a better word, but I can't think of one groom children to, you know, to, mm -hmm. to where are you going to go to college when you get ready? Where are you going to, where are you going to, where are you going to, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, it's, it's expected. Well, I want to go to, I want to go to college. I, I, you know, where am I going to go? I need to go to the best college. Well, that's also the most expensive. Right. <laughs> right. And you're, you know, you're 16, 17 years old and then 18 and then the pressure's on. You got to make a decision. You got to sign on the dotted line. Your brain is not fully developed. You in the medical field know that more than I do. Mm -hmm. Your brain's not fully developed until you're in your mid 20s. Right at 18 years old, you're making decisions about pulling out tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. You're getting barraged with credit card applications for what? What is that to a child? Free money. Right. That appears and feels and looks like free money. I mean, if there's something that we could do a lot of make a huge impact on financial um, literacy and in debt, and if we wanted to make a difference in the next generation's lives, we would educate them more to take a break during that time or have some transitionary period to where there wasn't a huge financial impact in decision they were making right at 18 years old. And they could go into some sort of exploratory phase. And whether that be a school host kids in their first year and helps them to decide we, we yeah, that's what's supposed to be happening in high school with guidance counselors, but we all know it doesn't No, it doesn't. And so, yeah, we're, f I mean, I'm frustrated about that and I don't even have any credit card debt. I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated for my friends and my, my coworkers and people that I know that are still paying and struggling with credit card or uh, credit card and student loan debt. And again, the moment you f default on a payment, a credit card payment, it goes right up to 29%. Now 
you should be taking that money and putting it into you know index funds, th retirement things. If you, but instead you're paying compounding interest to you know multi-billion-dollar financial you know institutions. It's crazy, Kim. You and so like, like you never get ahead. You can never get yeah. ahead. And then on top of all of that, once you become a parent, especially as a female, you're like, I did all of this and now I feel so different as a mom. Totally. You want to be home. You don't want to be out, right? The whole, a right. lot of, uh, and that's very understandable um, for any person, male or female, to want to pursue a career and and want to go out and explore the world. But you're right. When, when children pop out, the game changes. Mm -hmm. and then when you go back, at, a lot of times mothers or fathers, whoever staying at home, one, the other, both, you know, not, not trying to pigeonhole either one. You're speaking for moms. I'll speak sure. for that. Yeah. You, you don't want to, you don't want to go back to usually what you were doing before, because now you realize, especially with all the talk now mm -hmm. about with o our older generations, being honest, those who are honest with us about the fact that they, they spent an entire career. Bonnie, our, our, mm -hmm. um, our, our, our uh, main accountability coach, many of you saw that episode on Friday and uh, she's one of those ones who tells that story so vulnerably and honestly about, you know, working in corporate Canada for years and years and years and missing her young mm -hmm. Sydney, her daughter's kind of life. And so after you have the baby and maybe you want to go back to work, maybe whenever you can, depending on what your financial situation is. Yeah. You usually don't want to go back to the grind that no. you were in before. Right. 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 You go to work all day. You get up early. You just feed them, dress them, ship them off to a stranger. You spend all day dealing with like politics and toxicity and just doing a thing. And then you come home and you're like, hurry up and eat, get in the bath, get in bed. And then you're like, I'm exhausted. And I got to do this again four more times this week. <laughs> it's yeah. insane what we ask of parents these days. There's Bonnie right there on the hey, show Bonnie. speaking my life, Kim. I feel you, girl. Um, so, you know, for those of you who are listening and relating with this um, and, and just kind of thinking about entrepreneurship and thinking about, you, you know, I just th this is – this is the new future of, of, of America in the world, what we're doing here, because people are picking up on the fact that the real scam is the dream that we were all sold that, um, you know, that we be good little boys and girls, get good grades, get a good job, work until you're 65 years old. Mm -hmm. When here's the dirty little secret in, 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 the government doesn't what it why is 65 is because that's when you can start pulling social security yeah. right here's the dirty little secret the average life expectancy is 72 yep i just made some content on that i'm like that's that's what you want that many years left uh, then your yeah. kids are growing raising their own babies they don't have time for you now at least it was 72. It may have gone up, you know, it go, goes up kind of increment, very, very small over the years mm -hmm. because we get a little bit more modern medicine. And, um, but that's the, that's the scam folks. Yeah. That's the scam. That's the dirty little secret. Now, is, look, we need yeah. people to be in those industries. Like, don't oh. get me wrong. We need doctors. We need lawyers. We need, we need those people. But I feel like, what you're to get to your point too is like we're not educated on all of the options. We're made to feel you have to fit into this hole. And if you don't, then you don't fit in. And it's like, but I feel like I wasn't served all of the options. Or, or like, hey, being a nurse was great for a while, but why did I have to dig and dig and dig? to figure out that there were other options. I didn't even know there were other options. And then when I did discover there was other options, I'm like skeptical about it. It's been around since 1989. Totally. Yeah. I mean, 
I love that point when when we're introduced to entrepreneurship or o- online marketing, for example, we're so we're so primed. We're so again, you know, this is the software that was installed. If it's not traditional, if you're not showing up to a job, a building, you know, a if you don't have a boss that's laying things out for you, if if you're not you know, have that traditional, yeah, it's a, it's like, it's a scam. It's like, it's like friend, you know, before literally a hundred plus ish years ago that, I mean, people were traveling across the country to go dig for gold, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, or, 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 or they were running their own farm or they were, I mean, it's not that long ago, this modern, civilized civil civilized this is all the modern day kind of military industrial complex kind of i mean all of this factory worker all these rules that society lives by a lot of it is derived from the wars that we went through in Mm -hmm. this country where the schedules eight hour shifts, people working in factory worker, you know, factories, these kind of churning out these kind of factory minded people. We, they, the, you know, the government needed that. Um, it's what they do in a lot of other countries, China, for example, mm-hmm. where, you know, everybody sort of has the same, you know, does the same amount of time in the military. Every it's not optional. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and, What's beautiful about America is that it's the land of the free and it's the land of opportunity. Amen. It is the best country in the, in the world, mm-hmm. but you got to know how to play the game. You cannot just read one set of instructions and listen to one set of people, especially as you become an adult and you start to gain more awareness and you sort of unplug from the matrix a little bit which many of you are there. Many of you have been playing by their rules for many years and it feels so uncomfortable, but it's almost your, it's your God given right as a citizen to explore your options and not only follow one set of rules, which is that you must have a job that looks like this and you must, you know, struggle to get by, you know, it's almost struggles built into our society. You know, it's mm-hmm. almost like a we're, there's it's almost like a pride thing. You see people talking about it like, um, you know, uh, you know, well, I you know, there's a lots of things that we say and that we hear. But I think one of the main examples is, is that most of us don't have many friends that are doing like entrepreneurial ventures. Mm-hmm. So it almost becomes this thing of fitting in where you have, where you get together with friends and sort of commiserate about how tired you are and how hard you work. Right. And that's why it's so weird when you become an entrepreneur and we all say, well, I don't have any friends that do this. And my friends look at me like I'm, because when you start bringing positive conversation, positive mindset, and you start bringing like, a, you start thinking bigger and start thinking about, you know, making money on the internet or making money while you sleep or like setting up and using social media to, to leverage your time. People almost look at you like, what are you talking about? Like we're all right. over here tired. We're just trying to get by. We're just trying to like feed our kids. And you're over here talking about like this nonsense, like who do you think you are? Oh, absolutely. When I first started, I told a very small percentage of people that I know, which my circle is already small, but it was, um, I can't believe you're putting yourself out there like that. I can't do that. And I'm like, no, it's not that you can't, it's that you won't, but you'll sit here and complain about it, but you won't do anything about it. I'm here doing something about it. My kids are never going to get older and look at the internet and say, I can't make money off of it, but your kids might, (laughs) but like, this is a thing. And again, being skeptical is totally normal, but to, you know, look at somebody and say, I can't do that. 
all I hear is I won't, I won't do that. Whereas I'm over here. I'm like, I think it would be more embarrassing for me to just go back to another nine to five and try to make it work again instead of realizing like, I don't fit that mold. It's never been more clear that I don't fit that mold. So I'm going to try something different where I can make my own life, put the time in so I can get the time back. Yeah. Yeah. You have to surround yourself with people who are okay. Either they are also thinking outside of the box and acting outside of the box or people who are non judgmental of you mm-hmm. thinking outside of the box. Well, there was an interesting comment that came through. Uh, Sherry said they think positivity is annoying. That's such a great comment. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's so true. Right. I've like, been in workplaces where people are like, are you just a morning person? And I'm like, right. no, I'm just not going to be an a-hole. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, who do you think you are being, so positive and thinking that you're different from all of us. Right. You are, you know, the, it's like the gal, it's like, who do you, who do you think you are to, to be pursuing something that, you know, if, if, the, if something like that existed, don't you think we would be doing it? And oh, it's, yeah. like, it's like the doubt, you know, mm-hmm. the disbelief. And that's why at the beginning of starting something, you have to that skepticism, that disbelief is already built into all of us because of society and sort of the programming that we've all listened to. Um, it, it, you have to suspend your disbelief. You have to know that you're, there's going to be skepticism inside of yourself. What what limiting beliefs did you have to overcome that you felt were kind of deeply ingrained seeds that were planted that had been <laughs> growing that you had to like acknowledge and recognize if you wanted to be successful with this? Yes, um, I could probably write a book on this because to this day, I am succeeding in this and I still get caught in the, the if instead of the when it happens, I still on a daily basis, my husband is my biggest supporter. He will catch me and say, why do you talk like that? And I'm like, well, because like, if it happens, he's like, we've like, he's got to be exhausted by now when it happens, because what are you going to do now? Quit? (laughs) Like, Yeah, no, that's a good point. Why would I do that? Um, and I have struggled. So mindset, I work on it daily. I'm a, I'm a God fearing woman. So I have purchased a couple books and I started sharing this in my stories. I sit down every morning with God and I'm, he is my CEO. I, I, I give it to him because if, if, if it's up to me to determine what goes on in here, it's not good. It's straight the enemy. So I ha- I'm like every morning I got to get right with God because <laughs> I need that so much to change. It's a constant um, imposter syndrome. Who am I to help other people change their life? Um, Mm. Who who am I to do that? I constantly struggle with that. I'm aware, thankfully, at the beginning, it was like, uh, oh, you know, I really struggled with it. I'm aware of it now, but I definitely struggled with the limiting beliefs. I have on a daily basis, people come to me and say the list. And I don't think I've ever not related to somebody. They are mm. they feel too old. You look at the internet space and they're full of 20 something year old women who are, you know, in the best shape of their life, have zero wrinkles, you know, all the things. And I'm like, who am I at 40 trying to jump on Instagram and figure out how to make a reel? Um, never, you know, not tech savvy, like me either, but this is a beginner friendly side hustle. That's why it's got a reputation for what it does. Am I, people tell me all the time, I'm not extroverted like you. I'm like, I'm not either. I show up like that. Like after this show, I'm going to collapse. Like <laughs> I am like time to go home, pass out, but I'm show. I want this. And I knew that that's the one thing I knew. And when I get in my head, I started telling myself, Kim, you must not want it that bad. And I, it stings every time I tell myself that you must not want it that bad. You, do you want it today or no? So you have to work on it every single day. You have to work on this every single day. 
So the list of things that people say they don't have, I've had those too. But you, you, if you want to do something different, you have to do something different. Like mm -hmm. you have to make a change, not to sound like Michael Jackson, but you know what I mean? Like, so on a daily basis, I am constantly like, when, 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 do you want it or no? Um, my husband just started <laughs> his affiliate marketing business. He hasn't launched yet. Super excited for him. This man comes in, starts making reels. He doesn't barely need to edit them. Super confident. He's like, yeah, well, I watched you set up his funnel and everything in like a day. And I'm like, who, who are you? Excuse me, sir. <laughs> like, what's going on over here? But it's, it's going to be different for everybody. Um, so there's people, he's, he's extremely introverted, but he's coming off like he's, you know, knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I heard him cussing at Instagram last night in the other room, but <laughs> I'm like, I feel that. I remember that. <laughs> but I mean, it's, the the limiting beliefs are very real and i i feel that but for anybody who's on the fence every single person who's in this space has a limiting belief but we we don't just because we don't show it doesn't mean we don't have it mm. yeah yeah and that's that's mm -hmm. that's why it's so important to not compare your insides with somebody else's outsides yes you know other people look confident but they may be struggling with their own form of insecurity, anxiety, or imposter syndrome. I look extroverted, but I'm actually very introverted. I just turn it on when Same. I have to. Yeah. You know? I mean, I also, you can ask my team, I need to take a, a, a break after wake up legendary every day because yeah, it, it, you know, I don't particularly, you know, recharge from being, um, you know, social or interacting with other people. I sort of recharge on my own um, sure. in, in sort of solitude. Uh, so when I want to get some, some, some recharge on my batteries, you know, I, I typically look for solitude rather than look for, you know, other people to, to, to hang out with. But here's the thing you have to like, these things exist, not just in this space. Like I taught, classrooms full of people in my nine to five. And I, I didn't get the time afterwards to crumble. I had to like, look, like on, on the weekends, I would look at my husband and be like, no offense. I just don't want to talk. I mean, I'm sure he enjoyed that, but like, I was like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to do anything. Like my body hurts, even though I sat or stood, just stood all week. Like it's, so you have to do that in a traditional job. Anyway, yeah. those, those are like life skills. Like, do I want to go to my daughter's friend's birthday party? No, not really, but we do it. So, you know. Yeah. It's right. It, the beauty, the beauty is just here in this, in this business, I, I actually have the ability to be able to the flexibility to mm -hmm. be able exactly. to, you know, go sit on the couch. I mean, that's yeah. one of the reasons I think that, you know, the, I think, one of the things that we all have to look at when we're looking at starting a business, if it's a business at home, you, what is the value of you being at home? You get right? to like look homeless and work on the couch. Yeah. 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 So it's not, it's not, <laughs> it, you have to, you have to quote, quote, price it differently. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to, to, to get me to drive into a, a, a city and, in, in deal with traffic and parking and a oh, yeah. boss, a demanding a-hole boss and coworkers that are annoying and toxic and a work environment that has gossip and, you know, immaturity and high school antics and all the things that come along with people in a, in a closed, close setting. Um, and then do a job all day long, sitting at a computer in a, office doing nothing but looking at a screen and, and being in meetings. And half of the time you're doing somebody else's job too. And this one, you just yeah. get to do your own. <laughs> right. That, that needs to be, pro I need to be paid for the additional elements of the traffic, the parking, the, all those things. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas working at home, I, 
I can make less and, and be happier, right? And I think that's one of the things that I, I, I would invite everybody who's starting to, to sort of look at is price in all the things that you don't have to do, yeah. right? And give yourself more of a chance to get into momentum because you're not, you have to price in the, the cost of your happiness. And, and, and for the first year, lower or when you go into a building or survival phase in your business, which all businesses have, mm -hmm. all businesses go through ebbs and flows. So, you know, when you're, when you're flowing, you need to be saving money and you need to be investing money and be managing your money smart and correct. Mm -hmm. um, when you're, when you're ebbing and things are slow, it's, it's not time. And that's going to be at the beginning. And that's also going to happen throughout your business. Sure need to price in and remember that I don't have to go deal with traffic. I don't have to go sit in a cubicle. I don't have to, right? So I don't, I get to be at home with my family. I have flexibility to own my own schedule. You know, all those things are, are valuable and they yeah. may even be more valuable than money. Agreed. You know, I know a lot of people who do online business, whether it be in, in the, in the, businesses that we do or it be other verticals who are just as happy making much less than they made in their corporate career but they they've lowered their expenses they they're living be below their means they they downsized in certain areas and they're happy to be at home with their kids with their family everybody needs to I'd like to ask you how did I asked you about limiting beliefs mm -hmm. how do you how do you manage comparisonitis? And I call it comparisonitis. Of course, if you're a new viewer, it's sort of like, you know, what it sounds like comparing yourself to other people and their success. I know you kind of touched on the imposter syndrome and, and looking and comparing. So you touched on it, but how do you make your own, how have you reevaluated your life in, in your, in your, um, how your budget and especially when you started, like mm -hmm. how do you deal with making little to no money at the beginning, both mindset, but also if was there any adjustment of downsizing anything in saying, I have to make this sacrifice up front in mm -hmm. order to get to that growth stage of my business where more money sure. is coming. In? This is a really good question because I, did not have a zero to 5 million. <laughs> like that's just, that did not occur. And there's a lot of that on the internet. There's a lot of things and people, and there's a lot to compare it to. But when you're at the beginning, you have to grow. You have to grow. And I'm thankful for the experience that I have and the knowledge that I have in teaching new people in an industry on how to grow because I, I quickly had to basically remind myself, I, I, like my son, he plays guitar. He will about once a month at his lessons, he's nine. He will go to his lesson and cry because he, the music teacher gives him a new sheet of music and says, we're going to play this. And he's like, I don't know how. And it's like, well, dude, like that's easy for us to be like, yeah, it's brand new. But why as adults do we not do that to ourselves? It's brand new. One note at a time. One thing at a time. Learn one thing at a time. So while I definitely compared myself to others, and there was a lot of comparing to do, and there's the typical like your day one is not somebody's, you know, day whatever. There's also the like, okay, this is possible. So what can I do? do. So I definitely struggled with comparisonitis, but I also had to continuously, again, my mindset, remind myself I'm new at this, give myself the grace and room to grow. There are strategies to grow. And then right now I feel like I'm really deep in a strategy of becoming my own business, becoming my own brand. And I'm really trying to embrace that. So I grew and I have a following and I feel like my following really likes me. I feel like they really are learning to trust me. And it's because I'm showing up as me, not somebody else. 
because I could easily say that's working for her or him. And so I should try that. But I have quickly working on my mindset said, no, I, I can't do that because I, I'm not them. So, and I've found that in this space of growing has allowed me to look at all of the pieces of my business and say, you know, that was good at the beginning. It's kind of crappy now, Kim. So it's time to work on that. Um, and let's, now that you know the foundation, I can build upon that. And I think adjusting, constantly adjusting your expectations of what do you expect from yourself? Also, like when my son, when I watch him do that, I, I kind of had that epiphany like a couple of months ago. And I was like, why don't I, why don't I do that to myself? Why don't, why don't I talk to myself that way? It's a new, you're building a new business. You're coming from a traditional lifestyle. You're building a new business. And you want this business to be long-term and sustainable. So how can you do that? I don't know, but I'm, I have the resources. I have the resources. I invested in resources. I invested in industry experts to be here. So it's, it's time to dive into that. It's time to stop comparing yourself to the people doing whatever it is that they're doing and build your brand for yourself so mm. that you can do this for a long time time because that's the point, isn't it? I, during the, so as far as like the sacrifices, after I got fired from the one job, I did go get another job. And that kind of really triggered me to get started because it was a job I really wanted, but the hours were a lot less than what I was comfortable with. So I knew like, you got to, you got to make this work. Um, <laughs> So I just kind of dove in. At first, it kind of bothered me having the mindset of a worker bee, of a W-2 worker bee. Like, how many hours have I put into this? Even though it fit into the cracks of my life, the mom cracks of my life, I still kind of focused on how much time are you spending on this until a couple months later when I realized it doesn't really matter how much time you spent on this because I'm starting to see the benefits of doing this and seeing how putting the time in is going to give me time back. And so when people come to me a lot and they're like, how much time until you saw a certain amount of success or I only have this amount of time every single day. And I'm like, if you're focused on that, then this might not be for you. I understand that mindset, but I have that conversation with them as well as we have the wrong mentality as somebody having to work for man and trade their time for money and that we have to start shifting it back. I just the other day dove back into rich dad, poor dad, because I'm like, I need, you know, I, I, we constantly need to work on our mindsets. Mm -hmm. Um, and that book is a classic. There's a reason it's been around <laughs> for is it 20 years or something like that. Um, because it's not, it's not get rich quick. Yeah. It's what can you do so you can work for yourself? I can't rely on workplaces. That that was proven. I, I don't fit the mold. So how can I work for myself and be successful long term? Got to put the work in to do it. Not be afraid of saying, here, this is what I have. I need to work on that still. Like, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the, there's, there's, you're always going to be a learner. You're always going to, I mean, this, this, at this mindset of I'm going to arrive at a certain point and I'm just going to know it all. And mm -hmm. I'm going to, I think this mindset, this expectation that a lot of people have when they first get started is that, you know, I'm going to find a secret or, or just, discover a guru or something and it's the work is going to be done and I'm going to arrive. It's like, it's like this looking for the winning lotto ticket mentality. And once I find it, I just have to go cash it in and I just, mm -hmm. I'm not going to have to do anything anymore. And that mindset is just a complete and total mindset of what was, you know, ingrained in all of us growing up is just, I mean, we've all been pounded with the lotto mindset. Why? Because we just, we've, we've known about, it's the lotto. Just that example alone right. is just, or game shows where we watch and somebody wins a, 
a prize in there. You think they're set for life because they won a half a million dollars. It's like, I mean, they're not, or a hundred thousand dollars. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. They're like, Oh my God, they're, they're rich now. Um, and they'll never have to do anything again. And it's like, I mean, no, you know, they just, that, that's, 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 that's now 75,000 or 50,000 after taxes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, they're probably going to mismanage it because they, they don't have any idea of what it's like to have money. And so, um, getting, get, you know, embracing the, uh, what I kind of, I think the real secret here is, 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 is this, and I'm going to share this here. Um, I want to share this image if I, if I can, let me find it. Can you see this image? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Everybody's hungry to win, man. Everybody's hungry to win, but, but nobody, hardly anybody is hungry to do what winning requires, you know, and that's what we need to like get hungry for. We need to get hungry to do what winning requires, right? And, and build the habits of getting up every day and having a routine, a schedule, um, making, making healthy habits, self-care be a, the new normal, um, making the focusing on the 20% of things that are going to get you 80% of your results instead of almost every single person that I've talked to that is struggling is stuck in the doing 80 plus percent of things that are getting them less than 20% of their results. If any, they're getting up, they're checking their email, they're, you know, getting onto social media, Oh, this person's going live. Let me watch them. This person's doing that. Let me, oh, this person's selling a new thing. That might be the thing. Oh, that person's video, let me, really resonated. Now let me, or they said something that's contradictory to what I'm doing. Maybe that, and it's just all procrastination to avoid taking the next step and being consistent with something in, 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 in really dedicating yourself to, nothing's going to work out unless you stick with it long enough to where you get into a momentum phase. All companies suck at the beginning. All companies, most entrepreneurs get a thousand no's. They get turned down by investors. They get, you know, that's not going to work. They, they, then they launch and people criticize. They, they say the product sucks. They may have to go back to the drawing boards. Maybe the product does suck. Just like when people get online, they start doing videos, they suck, they don't like the name, the sound of their voice, they don't like the way they look on camera. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. Every entrepreneur goes through the same thing. It may just be wrapped in a different wrapping paper. But we need to become addicted not to winning because you're not always going to win. The competitive nature in human beings means that being competitive means you're not always going to win you're addicted to doing what winning requires. That's what kind of sports teach you when you play them is that, look, you're going to lose a lot. Every winning basketball team, I, the finals just happened and actually game seven of the Stanley Cup finals is tonight. Yep. Look at the records of the teams that were in the finals. They didn't go 100-0. Mm -hmm. They went like 60-40. and 40. Or 70 and 30. And the losing teams were like 30 and 70. And I guarantee you those winning teams had losing seasons not too long ago where they were the 30 and 70. They they lost more than they won. You learn more from losing than you do winning. But eventually, because you're addicted to and you're hungry to what to, to do what winning requires instead of only hungry to win, you keep practicing. Mm -hmm. You keep showing up to practice. You keep doing all the things when nobody's looking. And then eventually you get good enough to where you have the best record and maybe the best team in the league and you get to the finals and you have a chance to win a championship. But even if you don't win a championship, it doesn't mean that you didn't have a successful season. You can still make a great living without being the absolute best, both in sports and also in entrepreneurship. You don't have to be the number one. A lot of times we compare ourselves to the number one person. And we say, well, if I, you know, who am I to even try? Well, 
even the worst player in the in the in the league of of hundreds or thousands of players in the NHL of the NBA still make a great living. And if you want to be the top paid person, you're going to have to do a whole hell of a lot. I mean, people don't talk enough about the practice that somebody like Michael Jordan put in, how difficult of a teammate he was to be around because he really was so competitive. He was damn near mean to his teammates. Mm. But And they hate, hated him some days because he was so difficult to be around in practice and stuff. But now they're sitting around retired wearing six rings, those who were on his team and him himself, and they're thankful for all of that, that, that grind, that sacrifice that happened. And so get hungry to do what winning requires, friends. That's what I've heard you talk about throughout this entire episode, Kim. Mm -hmm. Instead yeah. of just being hungry to win, because look, if you're only hungry to win, you're going to starve. Right. You're going to starve all your motivation and all your dedication and everything out because you're going to be so fixated on winning. And it's the win's never going to be good enough because you're always going to compare yourself to other people. Get hungry to practice, fall in love with the process, and understand there's going to be ups and downs, fall in love with coming back from something, fail sure. forward and fall in love with getting back up and you will be blown away by where you end up. Mm -hmm. Kim, final thoughts before we bring this in for a, a landing. I always get motivated and, and <laughs> I and love it. Um, Ron, I, I love talking to you. You got such a great mindset and I can tell that you've done the work and it's just refreshing. Oh, thank you, Dave. It's always a pleasure being on this show. Thank you so much. Um, I think for final thoughts, I think if you can just, I know I've touched on it like this whole show, but the world will tell you, you need to hustle. The world will tell you, you need to fit in a mold, but I have never found it to be more true that that is a lie. That is a complete lie. If you're not fitting a mold, if you you're not feeling like I need to hustle to exhaustion um, to succeed, which when you do, you're not going to find success there anyways or happiness there. It's okay. Figure out like what does. I have found this journey to heal more than just our bank account. It has healed literally so many parts of my life confidence that I never really realized I didn't really have has allowed me to define boundaries with people, has allowed me to be present with my kids, has allowed me to know that maybe working doesn't have to look like what I thought it had to look like. Um, just putting my head down silently and doing the dang thing has just can completely change your life. And I think I've never been more aware of like the hustle culture that the world tells you you need to be a part of. It's unfortunate because ultimately I think you're created to be somebody and you're already that person. You just have to find it. It's, and it's not the hustle culture. Mm. Yeah. Great words, great wisdom, great experience, awesome motivation this morning. Great to catch up with you, Kim, as always. As well. You know, Thank I you, look Dave. Forward, yeah, to the next time. And my best to you and your husband and your family. Stay legendary, my friend. I'll talk to you soon, okay? All right. Thank you. Bye. See ya. All right, my friends, you can find Kim at Rise Up With Kim. She's over on Instagram and Facebook, Rockstar. Just so great to connect with her and, and uh, you know, hear her story. Once again, in new, you know, revelations that she's had and experiences that, she, you know, things that she's learned along her journey of continuing to build her business and her brand. If you want to catch up with her, you can go find her at Rise Up With Kim. My friends, uh, it's a great day. Great day to, to you know, start, restart. There's no shame in the game of restarting. We all kind of got to restart uh, at some point. Get in the game. Get get you know. Do something for yourself. Get in line to um, you know find out what winning requires instead of just expecting to win. You know, f f fall in love with that process. 
of doing what it takes, of of practicing, of of you know putting in the work when nobody's looking, of developing the habits that it takes to be able to uh, to to win long term instead of win just one time. Uh, it's not going to last if you just win one time or get lucky. So figure out how to develop the skills and the habits in order to win over and over and over again. We teach that here at Legendary. And if you would go through the education and dedicate yourself to learning those foundational blueprints and those foundational skills taught within that education, coupled with the mindset that we talk about here on the show, the sky is the limit, my friends. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. As always, boom. Get out of here. Have a great day. Stay legendary. We appreciate you all. Thank you for the wonderful, amazing support of comments for Kim during the show. You guys make the show amazing and so much fun to do for each and every one of you. And if you're new, put your head down and focus on learning these skills. They'll change your life, my friends. We'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode. Get out of here. Peace.